NIMED is up 214% this year alone. 214% return year to date. That means if I invested 1 million naira in NIMED in January by now, my investment will be worth 3 million. That's a profit of 2 million naira in less than 10 months. That's massive. But we need to ask ourselves here, I mean, what's driving the rally in NIMED? Well, maybe some of you might want to talk about the outbreak of the pandemic, which has made um, a lot of health companies and stocks very attractive to investors. Perhaps that's one of the reasons, because when I looked at the top five best performing stocks this year alone, two healthcare companies actually made the list. It wasn't NIMED alone. There was also May and Baker. May and Baker is up about 56%. So that's massive return for just a year-to-date basis. What's year-to-date? What I basically mean is since the start of January to date. Massive. So I get a lot of questions about whether the stock market is the right uh, place to park money at this time when the stock market is at a record low. But I always say to people, come on, you only invest in the stock market when the market is down because that's the only way you can make a return. So you're looking to buy some value stocks, some stocks that are listed that are undervalued, you know. And if you're waiting for when the market is on a high, then there isn't really much profit to make. Because, I mean, how much can a stock go when it's already fairly priced in the market? It's only an undervalued stock that has that upside potential that you're looking for. And I think it's also important I note here that a lot of people talk about how um, they judge an expensive stock by just looking at the absolute number, the nominal value. So they say Nestle is a very expensive stock because it's 1,500 naira, for instance. But that's not really the measure of whether a stock is expensive or, or not. You want to be asking yourself some more technical questions like what is the price to earnings ratio of this stock? Price to earnings basically means how much an investor is willing to pay for each naira of a stock they're investing in. So that's a better gauge of really checking whether or not a stock is fairly valued or not. Not necessarily to just look at the nominal figure and say Nestle is 1,005 for instance, so I'm not buying that. I'd rather go for a penny stock or go for a stock that has a cheaper nominal value. Because guess what? It's possible that let's say stock A is priced at 50 naira and stock B is priced at 500 naira. It's very possible that stock B is actually cheaper than stock A, despite the fact that in absolute terms or in nominal terms, it looks like 500 certainly is higher than 50. Let me explain. So for the stock A that is priced at 50 naira, if you look at the price to earnings ratio of stock A, you find that at 50 naira, investors are already paying two naira for every one naira of profit made by that company. Now. That already gives you an idea that the stock is overvalued because any stock that is priced higher than one naira per return is a sign of an overvalued stock and then vice versa. If it's priced below one, then it tells you that the market is not fairly priced in and there's probably some room for upside. So the 50 naira stock is priced at two naira per earning. But the 500 naira stock might actually be priced at 0.5. The absolute number has nothing to do with the price to earnings. Because at the end of the day, you're looking at, okay, so how much are investors paying per earning? Not necessarily the absolute figure. I can assure you that all of those explanations I just gave now might not be sufficient to help you understand the concept of price to earnings ratio. You probably need to do some reading on your, on your own. But always understand, really, if there's anything you need to take away from this, is that it's not all the time that a stock that is priced at a higher nominal value than another stock that it definitely means that that stock is more expensive. No, you need to look at the price to earnings ratio. So back to... NIMED, oh, I still regret I didn't buy that stock at the start of the year. I mean, how would I have known that it would return 200%? The stock market is highly unpredictable. Sometimes you, you go in there with, with your right calculations, you think you're going to make a killing, and then, wow, you get disappointed. Sometimes you overlook some stocks, but they do well. Okay, so let's talk about the frequently asked questions. Uh, the first question I typically get is, how do I invest in the stock market? You know, what's the process like? Some people think it's still very traditional. You need to go to the company or you need to go to the NSC. I can tell you for a fact that you don't need to do all of that. I mean, um, when I was opening my stockbroking account, all I, I didn't even go anywhere. I mean, all I just had to do was download the uh, portal of the stockbroking firm I chose, and I sent a few documents via email, you know, some know your customer documents that typically these kind of guys will ask for. And I sent that and uh, I funded my account and I started trading, all digital. So that's the beauty of it now. You could take advantage of digital technology. You don't need to go through the traditional way of buying shares. So it's pretty much convenient for you, in case you didn't know that. Another frequently asked question is, how do I select the right stocks? Well, I need, you need to know that it's a measure of your risk appetite. So sometimes, some people are very risk averse. In fact, you tend to find them not even in the equities market. They probably like fixed income. But if you're in the equity market and you, you, you don't really have a lot of stomach for risk, then you probably want to look at some of the traditional names. You know, you hear the investment bankers talk about the 
financial sector, you know, the financial services sector, the banks in particular. They also talk about the consumer goods companies. You know, at the end of the day, these two sectors are quite integral to the economy. And then when you consider that Nigeria has a population of 200 million people, you know that people must consume. So you already know that, of course, there, there will always be opportunities in you know, investing in the stocks of consumer goods uh, firms who really uh, tackle a lot of that. So that's for the risk averse people who are in the stock market. There are not many. But the real guys, the bargain hunters, the value investors who are in the stock market who are looking for ways that they can invest in a stock that can return 200%, like NIMET, for instance, they, you need to do a lot of fundamental analysis. At least that's what I do. You could do technical analysis, which is just basically studying the market for when it tends to go up and when it tends to go down. But I don't like that. I'm a long-term investor. I like to look at the fundamentals. So I look at the company. I check your books, your financial statements. I probe. I look at it. I then look at some of those metrics I talked about earlier, like price-to-earnings ratio, price to book ratio, some of those things, just to get a great sense of how that stock is valued. I'm not going to be looking at just the amount. Oh, it's 500 naira, it's expensive, I'm not buying. You know, at the end of the day, it's better to own 1% in a $100 billion company than 100% in a $100 company. So sometimes it's not really about the absolute amount. So you need to do that as well. You need to be able to do that fundamental analysis. If you can't do it yourself, you can get a stock broking firm. The beauty is these stockbroking firms, they have investment bankers who are professionals, they do all of this research all the time and then they advise you. But of course, there's always a caveat that you might lose all of your money. You need to know that. You might actually lose all of your money in the stock market. There are good stories and there are bad stories. There are people who have invested in January and today, the value of their uh, asset has gone down dramatically. I mean, the market is down 5%. You know? So in the end, it's a risky one, but I wish you the best as you go about trying to select the right stocks for your portfolio. Thank you very much. Thank you.